Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I got my ram headdress mask painted and now the fun part, I get to try it on. <laughs> I have a fun job. I used him kind of as a guinea pig for a new do-it-yourself modeling paste and so I put fur all over him. But then I painted him black so you can't see it. So you probably won't want to do that. I'm kind of expecting that people will be wearing this in a play. I painted him really simply. It went really fast except for the drying time. Of course, you always have to, you know, put on one color and then wait for it to dry. So that took a long time. But other than that, it was really easy. I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's get started. First thing I want to do is put holes right here for the strap. It is a little bit awkward to hold on to it so make sure you don't have your hand back there <laughs> when you're running the drill that could hurt and now i'm just going to paint most of it black there's a big decision you've got to make if you're if you decided to go ahead and make a black-faced ram the scottish black-faced ram is just an absolute gorgeous animal and most of the front of his face is black with some white here and some white hairs up on his eyebrows, which is really cool. But I believe that everything else back behind, behind the horn and everything down here is white. Now that means that if you're wearing this in a play, that means that the cap is going to be really visible. So I'm, I think I'm going to just put this front here and then paint all the rest of it, the back of it black. But that's something that you'll have to make, you know, just make a decision of your own or, or look at other types of rams. They have so many beautiful colors and, and patterns. And I put just a little bit of burnt umber into that black. Just to warm it up just a little bit. Then I mixed up some raw sienna, some white, and just a small touch of ultramarine blue and a whole lot of water. I'm trying to make a really wet mix here. I put the the yellow on the eyes too. I've got one of those wispy brushes. You can do exactly the same thing with just one small brush. You don't have to have one of these. To keep the paint from clumping up on the hairs of this silly brush, it actually helps if you uh, put a little bit of water in the paint. But not, not too much because then it will go transparent. It's hard to tell that if there's any white on the ears because in most photographs the ears are kind of covered up by the horns. But I'm just going to throw some on, just because I feel like it. A little bit of hairs right here. If you make one of these, I really hope that you'll show us how it looks on the Daily Sculptors page on my website. I know that everybody's going to pick out a different breed of ram. They're going to paint it differently and come out so different. And they're all going to look really nice. These are really beautiful animal. I gotta finish this up with white. I'll go ahead and do that with a bigger brush. He actually has a wool colored, you know, the, this color <laughs> down here and all along his back as well. But I'm just gonna go ahead and, and use the white. I have to hold him upside down while I'm painting the other side <laughs> because that way I can see both sides. Now I'm gonna try to bring out the texture in the horns. Obviously, you don't have to do that if, if it's not going to be seen <laughs> up close, but I just want to do it anyway. I have some burnt sienna just a little bit, some burnt umber, and I'm going to mix it with satin glazing liquid. And that's going to make it transparent, and I'm also going to get out a actually two paper towels, one of them wet and one of them dry, so that I can pull it off the tops of these ridges. Because I had the burnt sienna out already and the 
glazing liquid, I mixed those up just in a really, really tiny amount. I'm going to try the mixture with the burnt umber. I really like the way it looks. As a matter of fact, if I'm more careful and I don't put on quite so much, it looks like it just naturally falls into the cracks. And then the brush can pull it off the tops. That's going to be a lot easier. I put the, the brown from here down here and then just kind of faded it out. So there isn't any on the on this part. Um, it just seemed like some of the horns that I've been seeing have stronger ridges up here. So I wanted them to just kind of disappear just a little bit on this end. Just a, something I felt like doing. We've got um, pupils that are just like a long rectangle. But if you look at close-ups of a ram's eyes, they're amazing. The, the detail is just really incredible. I'm not going to do that on this guy just because, you know, from a from the audience, no one would see it. But if you have a chance to look at some photos of ram eyes, definitely do it. Very last thing to do is to add the straps. I'm just using shoelace. Actually, two of them that I cut in half, and a washer. Now I'm just going to put it in that hole that you guys saw me drill. Now, if I was a smart person, I would spray paint a whole bunch of washers black. <laughs> don't know why I don't do that. We're going to need four different straps to hold these on from uh, both the front and back of the ear, and that'll help balance it really nice. So my ram headdress mask is all finished now. If you'd like to make a ram mask using my pattern, you can find it at ultimatepapermache.com ram mask. <laughs> and if you're interested in the patterns for any of these guys back here, and many more, <laughs> you can find them at ultimatepapermache.com slash patterns. If you make one, I sure do hope that you'll come back to the ultimatepapermache.com's daily sculptors page. There's a link to it at the top of the site and you can show off your your ram or anything else you make and I really want to see how it comes out. Every single one of these is going to be different because so many breeds of sheep and even when I look for, this, this is a Scottish black faced ram and when I went out looking for photographs of these guys, every single individual was different. They had different color patterns, uh, the different spots, different places, more white or more black. Um, and, the, and the horns were really different on every single one of them. So there's just so many different things that you can do. And there's so many other breeds too. So I don't know which one you'll choose. You'll make different artistic choices than I did and they're all going to be really pretty. If you go to the Rams page, you can also see how all of the pattern pieces go together and you can see how I put the paper mache on there and how I made that texture on the horns with some paper towels. The only thing that's left on this one, I am going to spray it with a just a spray varnish um, just to protect the paint. But other than that, he's all done. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Go make something and come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.